ChatGPT is now able to process images, opening up a range of new possibilities. For example, I drew this picture of a sign-up form and asked GPT to write me the HTML for it, including the CSS and JavaScript. After a few seconds, it output the code, and if we open it in a browser, we can see that it works perfectly. It even captured that I specifically mentioned Instagram in the diagram. In fact, I even used GPT to write the interface that allowed me to ask that question. After a short conversation with GPT in a Jupyter notebook, the interface code was complete and working as I'd asked. I didn't write any of it on my own. And it's not just images. AI can even generate music based on text, like this melody that Music LM created after I gave it the description, a rhythmic East Coast boom bap hip hop beat, uplifting and inspirational. The ability of an AI model to work with different types of data, like text, audio, and images, is called multimodality. But how does multimodality actually work? In other words, how are AI models able to process these distinct modalities of data? Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how multimodal AI works. First we'll talk about how text to image models like Dolly work to get an understanding of multimodality in general, and then we'll talk about how interfaces like ChatGPT are able to both take in and generate text, audio, and images. At their core, multimodal models tend to share similar operating principles regardless of the particular modalities considered. So let's start with text to image models like Dolly. Modern image models are generally built on what's called diffusion models, which generate images from pure Gaussian noise. One limitation of diffusion models is that they just generate any image at random without any way to control the process. Text to image models, on the other hand, add the modality of text to guide the image generation process. To understand how these models work with both text and images, it's important to first see that both modalities can represent the same semantic concept. In other words, when we see the word woman and we see an image of a woman, we understand that these are just two representations of the same underlying meaning, which is the concept of a woman itself. One is a visual representation, and one is a textual representation. Rather than working with these representations themselves, a multimodal AI model will often work with the meaning directly. Multimodal models use embedding models to convert text and images to vectors that capture their meaning. To learn more about how and why this works, you can check out our video on word embeddings. The relevant question for us is, how are these embedding models trained? There's no single answer to this question, but a model like Dolly 2, for example, actually uses another model called Clip to train these embedders and therefore learn this meaning space. Let's take a look at how Clip is trained now. Since our goal is to learn how images and text relate to the same concept, we start with a dataset of images and their captions. For every pair, we encode the text and image using the respective encoder, so we're left with a pair of vectors for each image caption pair. In our case, we have a pair of vectors for an apple, for a chair, and for a dog. We then train by maxing the cosine similarity of these pairs. The cosine similarity is a distance metric for vector spaces that measures the angle between vectors. By maximizing the similarity, we are pointing the text and image vectors for the same concept in the same direction, giving this direction meaning in the space. Similarly, we train to minimize the cosine similarity of text and image vectors for two different concepts. And we repeat this process for every combination of text and image vector in the batch. In this way, we'll train the encoders to map both text and images to the same space in such a way that their meaning is preserved. The learning of the space lies at the crux of how multimodality actually works in this instance. To generate an image, Dolly 2 will embed the input text into this meaning space, map the meaning textual vector to a visual meaning vector, and then decode this visual meaning vector into an image. How this actually works in practice is by conditioning the diffusion model which generates the image. This gets a little complicated, but diffusion models use what are called unets to iteratively denoise a Gaussian input into an image. And the meaning vector is used to condition this process to generate a specific image. You can read our article on building your own text to image model if you want to actually see how this works under the hood. But what about models that can both input and output multiple modalities like ChatGPT? Text to image models only handle one modality at each end of the model, text on the input and images on the output. On the other hand, ChatGPT can now accept images, text, and audio and generate images, text, and audio. This ability actually leads to an issue that may not be immediately obvious. For example, imagine a detective who describes a crime and then asks ChatGPT to paint me a picture of a man who would commit such a crime. What is the detective asking the model to do? Is he asking the model to metaphorically paint a picture of such a man, like his backstory, his motives, etc.? Or is he asking the model to literally paint the picture of a man that is, a literal image of his face, perhaps using details from witness reports. A priori, the model really has no way to know, and in fact, humans would give different responses to the same question. The fundamental thing to note here is that when somebody says ChatGPT, he's actually referring to two distinct things. First, there's the LLM ChatGPT, 
which is just GPT with RLHF fine tuning. And then there's the UI chat GPT, which is the web application that users use to actually interact with the model. When ChatGPT first launched, there was a one-to-one -one correspondence, and so this distinction didn't matter. But now that the ChatGPT UI can accept multiple modalities, this distinction does matter. The user interface no longer just uses the LLM ChatGPT under the hood. It also uses Dolly 3, likely Whisper, and some sort of text-to-speech model. If we speak to ChatGPT and ask it to draw a picture of a rabbit, this audio will first be converted to text by Whisper, then it will use the LLM ChatGPT to interpret this request, and then that response will be passed off to Dolly 3 for the actual image generation. We're performing audio to image, but there's no actual audio to image multimodal model. Instead, we're using an audio to image pipeline that actually uses three multimodal models under the hood. Text is used as the common factor to tie all of these modalities together because of the power and expressivity inherent to natural language. Still, the process to determine what modality is actually output is unclear and the details have not been published. There may be an element of RLHF here where, during training, the model is allowed to output both images and text, and the user decides which one he prefers. In this way, the model will learn what output modality humans expect in different requests. You can read more about how Dolly 3 might work in ChatGPT in our blog. Alright, I hope that gave you a good idea of how multimodality actually works, and the distinction between multimodal models and multimodal interfaces. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment below, otherwise I'll see you in the next video.